the first thing to understand about certainty is that is that when two people are in rapport, whoever is the most certain will always influence the other person. Hello, Sales Nation. I'm Will Barron, host of the Salesman Podcast, and welcome to today's show. Today's show, we have Paul Adamson. Find out more about him over at pauladamson.org. He is a sales strategist, sales consultant. But in today's episode, we're going super deep. I personally got a lot out of this episode, so I'm sure you will too. We looked at how and what we can change in our own psychology, in our own body language, all these kind of things, in our own perception of the world that has a knock-on effect on how others perceive us and how we can influence others through this. So we're looking at what we can control to influence others rather than, you know, waiting, praying, or hoping that we're going to be able to affect them in some way. It all will make total sense as we jump into the episode. And with all that said, let's jump straight in. Hey, Paul, and welcome back to the Salesman Podcast. Well, it's great to be back. Hey, well, this is episode three of 365. <laughs> so uh, so uh, sit tight, stay tuned. We're going to rock and roll today, ready to rock. <laughs> Mate, you say that as a joke, but over the course of the next five years, it may not be 300, but there's definitely you know a good 30 episodes here in conversations between us. So I appreciate that. Um, I, maybe if I do Let's the show do for it. another 20 years, there might, there might be more, but uh, that might be pushing the, uh, the amount of content that we can pull from the world of sales, perhaps. But on today's show, I want to carry on from the previous two shows and, and take a slight angle on it as well and focus things because there's so much to go out with this and there's so, there's so much depth and uh, outside of sales relevance to it as well. And I want to look at, and I want to ask you, quiz you on it, what we can do with our own psychology with you know the tony robbins idea of having of state the kind yes. of excitement levels that we're in what we can do to control all of that which affects other people and then and this will make more sense as we get into the show but where i want to start with all this is this idea of certainty and i'm gonna just um kind of give my thoughts on it and then i want to quiz you on how we how we implement it because that's the the challenging bit and you're clearly the expert in that so I know that when I speak with a customer, for example, HubSpot, I've just partnered with the Sales and Podcast to help us put out all our live content. And I'm so excited about this live side of things, the in-person meetups, the uh, attending the Revenue Summit, attending the Sales Innovation Summit down in London. I'm so certain that I can add huge value to them and clearly leverage the cash and partnership with me to give them a huge return and obviously provide value for Sales Nation, which is the basis of all this. I, I, when I've been on the phone with them, I've been so certain in these conversations that they've not questioned anything. And there's no evidence of what I'm planning to do. This is a totally new like channel of, of content for us. And not one person has said, how are you going to do that? Why is this going to happen? Why is it going to work? And the only reason why this has been such a successful because clearly I've been selling them. It's a sales process to get them on board and partnered with us. But the only way that I managed to do it and the only way I needed to do it, no weird tricks, no hacks, no weird language patterns, which we've talked about on the show before, things like this. It's just through dead certainty that I'm going to win in this live space. So am I perceiving all this? And uh, Am I kind of like pulling many crazy things together to come to that conclusion? Or is it as simple as, when you as a salesperson are dead certain on an outcome that transfers to, to the person that you're speaking to? Great question. And uh, you absolutely are perceiving this would be the first thing that I would say. And I think the first thing to understand about certainty is that, is that when two people are in rapport, um, whoever is the most certain will always influence the other person. And that's a real nugget of information. Now you've got to have rapport, obviously, but uh, and that means you know that the other person likes and trusts you, etc. But when you're in rapport, if you think about it, whoever is most certain will influence you. So, uh, what do I mean by that? I mean this: if you think of a conversation you've had with somebody where um, where you've not been sure, you're trying to make up your mind, you've got a, you've got a decision to make, and you're not sure, but yet someone comes along that you know, like and trust, which we all throw that around all the time now, but it's true. <laughs> somebody that that we know, like and trust, 
In fact, we should change NLP to KLT. There you go. That's the, that's the next episode, KLT. So, so once you've got somebody that you know, like, and trust, if they come along and they're really certain in terms of the way that you should go, you will naturally go there. Um, and that's because the person that is most certain will always influence the other person. Now, certainty, what is certainty, I suppose, is what we should define. Well, certainty is nothing more than just a feeling of of knowing which way it's going to go, meaning you know the outcome. It's actually knowing the belief. You remember we're talking about beliefs last time and how important they are. And if you really believe in what you're doing and every fiber every fiber of your being believes, not just kind of, you know, I believe it's possible, I believe that we can do <laughs> Spot. You know, because we, you all feel like you've all felt that straight away there because we've just gone into an uncertain state. But so, cert, so certainty is crucial because and it is nothing more than a state, because when you are very certain, you will influence somebody that you're in rapport with. So um, I'm all for what you're saying as well about less techniques, because we can try all these techniques and all these of these things. But let's be honest, if you feel like somebody's trying to technique you, you're just going to put your barrier up and you're going to push back quicker than anything. You're just going to push everyone away because our brains are wired for survival. Our brains are constantly trying to work out, is this a friend or a foe? Our brain is wired to actually make us survive. So, so, so while that unconscious process is going on all the time, if we start to technique somebody and not be ourselves, that that other part of the brain that's sitting in the background kind of watching out and waiting for anything that's a threat to you will just kick in straight away and that person will instantly reject you, you know? So so that's where kind of, so certainty is nothing more than a feeling and we can invoke that feeling. So how do we do it? Well, if you think about it, if you listen to just my tonality of voice, so if we talk about, you know, um, uh, let me think of something that's good here. So, um, you know, Hi, I'm Paul Anderson, and I'm here to talk to you about motivation and how you can change your life today. Or, hi, I'm uh, Paul Adamson, and um, you know, uh, maybe with you know, we're going to talk about motivation. I mean, I mean, you can hear the difference, and the difference is just purely state. So it really leads into how we manage our emotional state and how we manage our mindset. It's crucial, you know. If you learn nothing else, whether it be in sales leadership, your life, your intimate relationship, how you are with your kids, wherever it is. And I believe that we're selling all the time. And actually what we're selling is how we live our lives to ourselves. And what I mean by that is, do you get up in the morning and think, I'm going to make the most of today? Or do you get up in the morning going, oh, God, I've got to get up and go make some sales calls. Oh, God, you know, I've got to go do this. Or, you know, so I believe that it's really important to sell to ourselves. We also have to sell things to ourselves. We have to sell beliefs to ourselves. You know, are we going to get up in the morning and think about what's going to empower us? What are we going to eat that's going to fuel our body in a really nutritional way that's going to give us the energy to to succeed? Or are we going to take the easy option and reach and reach for that chocolate muffin? And then after the course of 20 years, after 500,000 chocolate muffins, you look like a chocolate muffin. <laughs> you probably taste like a chocolate muffin. And all of these things are overflowing out of you. So 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 the point is, is that you know let me, let me jump in here let me jump in here paul yeah, I, want, I want to cover pumping our state i want to cover the real practical ways to do that next because this will this will follow on from the certainty conversation but what i want to kind of double down on to with the certainty side of things is the practicality of implementing it because n you're not certain on pretty much anything and if you are you're a lunatic until you've had some kind of evidence perhaps to back a lot of this up and one sales manager I had give me a kind of hack for this. Uh, when I first started sales, when I was ringing surgeons and I was nervous because I perceived them as, uh, and, and it was and it was right to perceive them that way, that, you know, they were very hard to get where they are, but I perceived them as sure. kind of like the height of, you know, in, intelligence, society, all this kind of stuff. And it's sure. very difficult to build rapport with someone when you put them on a pedestal. So he told me to have conversations with them like they are kind of like, your dad or your uncle or your auntie or something like that of someone that you respect but you will call them out on any bullshit you will have a legit conversation with them and you know you care about them and you're framing the conversation that you care about them that you will you know identify anything where they think where you think that they could be uh you know, improving on 
So I then started calling on surgeons in this in this manner, and instantly I had more rapport with them. I was able I was able to be more certain in my conversations um, uh, because I I felt like I could add value to them as opposed to I had to sell to them and I was looking up to them as these like great individuals. When in reality, after two or three months of the job, you realize that they're just people. That <laughs> there's nothing more complex to it than that. So Paul, let me ask you: Are there any other um ways to because are there any ways to make yourself more certain or how do we become certain perhaps might be a better way to go about it because i don't want hacks of looking more certain in front of customers i want hacks to become Real more certain, certain. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that, yeah, that yeah. true Real. depth to do it all yeah okay so uh, three things are running through my mind now from what you just said number one is um i think that that was great advice you got about seeing the uh, person that you're phoning or or the prospect as your friend, family member, et cetera, because it just because because that in itself will put you in a different state. Um, somebody once said to me is um, when I was meeting a really kind of high powered kind of business guy and he's he's pretty he's pretty impressive. Um, you know, I was nervous in the beginning. And actually, when I met them, this guy actually said to me, he's a big venture capitalist guy. Um, and he, he actually said to me, Paul, he said, the thing you've got to understand is you've got to realize that we're all the same. You know, he said, at the end of the day, we all sit on the same to toilet seat. <laughs> and I love that because, you know, <laughs> it broke the ice, etc. cetera. And, and it's a bit of fun. But it's so true. Um, another one to think of that just popped in my mind is, if we're going to go universal and ethereal and all that kind of stuff, uh, we all came from the same star. So actually, if you if you rewind back to the star that exploded, we all came from the same place. And if you remember, bring that back into sales and into report, like attracts like. So, so if you are phoning somebody up and you feel like you're below them, that's really your own shit in your own head, as Buddha would say say you have to deal with your shit you know that's all that is. so so i think busting through that kind of just realizing that actually you know what you are enough you know and and those are our two deepest fear are hardwired into us uh from when we're very very young when 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 we arrive on the planet number one is and tony robbins he teaches this and he's you know he says all roads lead lead to rome and he's spot on is that we all think the two deepest fears we all have is that number one, I'm not enough. And because I'm not enough, I won't be loved. So what does that mean? It means, you know, I'm not rich enough. I'm not successful enough. I'm not, I'm not good looking enough. I'm not closing enough sales enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not this enough. And because of that, I won't be loved. Therefore, it's deepest fear. And deepest fear will put us into that place. You know, when we're fearful, as human naturally go into that uncertain state. And, and all that means is we're not sure what's going to happen next, you know. But here's the thing. Certainty is uh, one of Maslow's needs, right? It is that survival need. We need to feel certain. We need to know we've got a roof over our head, et cetera, and things like that. So certainty is really, really important. And we all go chasing after certainty. Here's the thing, though. If we were certain about everything in life, Everything in life. I mean that uh, you get up in the morning and this is what you do. And the next thing you do is this and this. And you do this and you do this and you do this. And it's the same every day. And then it's the same every month. And then it's the same every six months. And then every year, there comes a point where you get bored as hell, right? There comes a point where you're just like, ah, oh, not this again. So God, in his infinite wisdom <laughs> or her infinite wisdom, depending on your belief system, of course, um, said, okay, well, certainty is good, but you know what? Let's spice up life, and variety is the spice of life. So, therefore, uncertainty is also us as human beings because if we go certain all the time, all the time certainty, which is what most people are chasing for, and that would be job security, feeling comfortable, knowing the outcome, all of those things. If we're never willing to step outside of our comfort zone and go into uncertainty, we won't grow as human beings. So uncertainty, when you feel uncertain, all that means is you're growing. If you mean that you've got to pick up the phone and suddenly you're speaking to that guy that you really respect, you think, God, they're amazing. And um, yes, they may be further down the line from you. If your head is in the frame of reference of, hey, what can I learn from this? I'm going to 
I'm going to learn, I'm going to grow, you're going to come from a completely different place than you are going, oh, God, you know what, I'm not enough, maybe I shouldn't be calling, or, you know, and you can hear my state change as I even talk about that, and I'm feeling the fear now as well. So uh, that's number two, is realising that really, you know what, we're all the freaking same. You know? <laughs> you know, we are, we're all the same, we're all human beings, and the people that have got further down the line than us are generally people that have learned to be comfortable with uncertainty. Here's the thing, and you might want to write this down, is that is that the quality of your life is always in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably handle. Now, let's pause there for a second. And I'll say it again, actually. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty that you can comfortably handle. So that means, can you go into that place where, you know what, you're going to set that business up. You're going to make that call, even if you might be rejected. You're going to put yourself out there. You're going to, you know, set yourself up to maybe take a fall. But here's the thing. If you keep getting back up and getting back up and getting back up, you'll never fail because you can't fail if you don't quit. You get back up, you get back up, you get back up, you get back up, you get back up until that point where you get what you want. So certainty is really important, but I believe uncertainty is really important too. And the third thing to help you feel more certain, this is where you go crazy. This is where you go all American on us. And I love Americans, <laughs> if you're American, you listen to this. Americans are great at this. Hey guys, over in the States, you guys are great at this. Us guys in Europe, we suck at this. We are no good at this. And that is that is that, is that we'll do what uh, successful people will do what failures won't which is this you put yourself in a certain state there's ways to whip up an emotional state and that's where nlp comes in isn't it it's where all it's it's where all the psychology comes in so how do you do it well what's going to put you in a certain state well first of all it's understanding that three things control our emotional state we've spoken about this before focus language and physiology that's it now let's break let now let's make it really simple if you let's talk about focus first you focus on all the great stuff, you're gonna feel great. So before you pick up that phone and speak to that surgeon, you know, rather than focusing on, oh, they're higher than me, oh God, they're better than me, they're further down the line, you know, you focus on what can I learn from this? Or, you know what, I'm gonna, you know, uh, focus on what's great that's going on now because that's gonna bring a different part of you out. So focusing on what great makes you feel great. That's it. If you focus what, on all the shit, you'll feel What's a practical great. example of this for you, Paul? Because uh, it's one thing to say all this. Yeah. And I don't want to just come, keep bombarding the audience with like more intellectual knowledge. Like if you were going to make a phone call right after we finish up here on the podcast, what would you be, uh, I mean, you go through all three of uh, the focus language and physiology. What, what would be your process that you'd put in place? So clearly you're kind of a, a positive and, uh, inspirational and full of energy guy you know naturally like more so than me for example your your energy levels even though we've only ever really talked over the podcast your energy levels seem like a, a notch too higher than my base energy levels but what do you do to kind of like take that up a notch further or even to mold yourself so that if something bad happens in the phone call business-wise that you're not impacted by it. What What's your procedure to, to go down and, and to put all this into action? Great. So uh, so what I'll do is this. I pick a rock tune that I love. This, this is the first thing that I will do is I will go on a Spotify or I'll go onto iTunes, whatever it is, and I pick whatever tune turns me on right now. And I'll play that tune. And during that tune, I'm going to sing, I'm going to dance, I'm going to move my body. Because state is controlled by focus, language, and physiology. So so whilst I'm listening to that rock tune, I'm focusing on how great it sounds. I'm focusing on, I'm getting the result in advance in my head, which is what athletes do, right? It's they run the race beforehand. So, so I focus on getting the outcome, meaning that, you know, if it's a really important call, that's going to be with the decision maker that's going to ultimately change my life, um, you know, um, and uh, then absolutely, I need to be focusing on that I'm going to get the outcome that I want because that's going to bring out that really certain state in me. And let, let's Not just stop on this because this is super, I don't, I'm, I'm interrupting you purposefully here because yeah, there's yeah, loads go to go it. at. Fine, are fine. you, are you say like you're making a sales call and the outcome is that you're going to, you know, get agreement or get at the end of a conversation, send over an invoice or whatever it is. Are you visualizing you having the conversation with another person with you saying 
X, Y, Z, are you ready to move forward with this? And then and then them saying yes. Is it as literal as that that you are kind of like visualizing and playing out the exact sentences in your head to kind of like pre-frame the conversation? Or do you mean, you know, slightly more uh, openly when you describe that you're kind of like uh, visualizing the, the outcome? I'm further down the line than that, meaning I'm if it's that I'm sending the invoice, I'm 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 seeing the money drop into the account. Okay. Even better. So, that, yeah, so you know, this is why because, I asked that. Because yeah, and this is question. why it's brilliant, because I when I have these conversations, I'm always, and I, I wouldn't say I sit there and visualize it, but I'm usually kind of like I'll go and get a cup of coffee or whatever I'm doing, I wander around and I'm thinking about the outcome that I want to have. So perhaps I don't do it strategically and specifically enough. But what interested me there was I'm always on this kind of like next step, next step, next step, where clearly you're visualizing the kind of money drop in or what effect that has on you kind of in the bigger picture, which is really intriguing. That's right, because 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 when people say that you should be outcome orientated, one thing they never tell you is what they mean. Well, they'll tell you, yeah, always focus on the outcome. The outcome is really important. Of course it is. What I do, I focus on the out outcome, meaning this, I focus on the right at the end result. So how I'm going to feel when, because if we're talking about the cash dropping into your account and invoice being paid, and obviously we assume that there's been a good transaction of value, et cetera, all that stuff is a given, right? So, but, you know, what I'm focusing on is, hey, you know, is uh, how am I going to feel once I've closed this and served this client at a high level when that cash drops into the account? Okay, fine. I get this much, but I know I give more value out. So, because... If you focus on what you're going to say in a conversation, you'll fuck it up. I love this. And so th this this doubles over back to the kind of starting point of all this. And I've got an example with my girlfriend of if she's ever down and she's a doctor, so she has to deal with, you know, stressful situations at work and, you know, delivering bad news and all this kind of stuff. If she's ever down, the quickest way for me to turn it around for her is to just do something absolutely out of the blue and, and daft. And this happened recently. There's a, there's a park near us, a lovely lake and that. We walk around there and we sat down and we're having a cup of coffee and having a chat and she was kind of getting a, a bit down about a, a family thing that was going on. And there's people walking past and stuff. So there's kind of like uh, social pressure not to like cry or anything like that. But you, you can, I, I can tell that she's trying to hold it back and stuff. So I just got up and uh, just sat on her lap. And clearly this is like really embarrassing to have a grown bloke just sat on a random woman's lap in the middle of a park with people walking the dogs and all this. And so immediately she was thrown out of this, you know, getting kind of this like path leading to getting sadder and sadder and perhaps a tear or two into like, what the hell are you doing kind of thing. And then she realized the, the funniness of it and how just silly it was. And then immediately within that instant, she was super happy and the, the state had changed in an instant. But it was because of me doing something daft. It wasn't anything I said. It wasn't anything as, as as clever as using your kind of like your language and your internal dialogue. It wasn't me focusing on anything other than just trying to move her physically, kind of thing, and and, and have a laugh with her. And and clearly, I'm not saying that you should if a sales meeting is not going well, you shouldn't leap over the table and jump on the lap of the person that you're selling to. But, well, if it closes the deal, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a risky one, though. You've got to be, yeah, yeah, you've got to be yeah, pretty certain when you do it because you're either going to get the deal or a slap around the top of the head, uh, if, yeah. especially if it's a bloke sat on another bloke's lap. Um, but the, the, the point of the tale is that the, clearly there's variance to all of this. It's something that you can experiment with. But me being physical with my nature changed not her physical body but changed her kind of like mindset brain internal dialogue and all this so it's clearly there's it's super powerful what i enjoy about these conversations paul is it goes way beyond just sales it you know it, it things like this allow you to have you know for me personally conversations like this and information about all this and, and just the knowledge you put into practice allows me to communicate better with with my dad and regular listeners will know that i lost my mom last year so i've got a real focus to spend more time with my dad, to communicate with better with him, to help him live out a couple of like kind of his dreams that he's always had, like owning a canal boat and all this kind of stuff. It allows me to communicate better with uh, my girlfriend, as I said. She kind of has ups and downs of work that she, you know, I I'm there to support her with. And uh, it allows me to, you know, close deals and, and communicate better on the phone over Skype in these interviews as well. Yeah, um, so absolutely. I, I just, I just and love the way that there's so much depth to all of this. And it's, you know, it helps you close more deals, but then, I feel genuinely it helps you as you, as very the beginning, it allows you to build a report with someone. And when you're both in report, it allows you to have that certainty that it is, is passed on to others. 
Yeah, and you, you know what's really interesting there, Will, is 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 actually what you did that when you sat on uh, your girlfriend's lap, what that did was you dragged it out of your head, out sorry, out of her head and into the moment. Because 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 eighty five percent of the things we all worry about never come true. Eighty five percent of them. Yeah. You know. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here because I've got one question to ask you, Paul. And um and, and just to kind of like go over that with my beliefs, what you just said, just to wrap up before I ask you the final question, I ask everyone that comes on the show and you've answered it a bunch of times. I don't believe that the there's a universal consciousness or uh, karma or re- any religious figure like it has any magic powers or that there's a god or that there's the universe. But what I do believe in, and I can physically touch it, I can research it myself, is there's a ton of research in the psychology um, and the effects of being a positive person. And these people frame things differently. They see the same scenario as someone who's a pessimist or in the middle. And they frame it differently and they have more success because of that. It's really well studied. Um, I'll link to some studies in the show notes of this episode for anyone who's interested. So you don't need to have any uh, beliefs. You don't need to be religious. And, you know, if, if, you, if you've got all that, then fine. But there's, there's research-driven data that shows a lot of this is fact. So I take um, kind of like humble like gratitude in, in knowing that. And that's how I believe, and I'm doing air comments for everyone who's listening, believe in it. And with that, mate, I've got one final question. I've asked you a couple of times, so I'm going to rephrase it slightly. But if you could go back, if you could go 10 years back in time and okay, give yourself... So rewind 10 years. Yeah. 10, okay, 10 so years back in time and you give yourself yeah. one piece of business advice to help you become you know, more successful in the, the following 10 years, what would that one piece of business advice be? Simple. You can't manage what you don't measure. Meaning, meaning that I was great, you know, when I set up my first company, which would be about 10 years ago, which was a sailing company in Dublin, I had no business experience prior to that, I just set it up, I just had a belief and a passion. And I basically just learned, l- learned on the hoof, it was massively successful. Uh, we, we made a lot of money very quickly. Um, however, I was ne- the bit because I would be classed as a creator, you know, you hear me very passionate, yeah. you know, da, 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 as uh, the bit of business advice that I've had to learn is really to measure uh, my results and measure financial optics, measure all of those things, just so you can keep a handle. Because once you're measuring what you're doing, then you can see what works and what doesn't work. So I think that would probably be the bit of advice that if I'd had that back then, it would have been slightly different. However, I've got to say, everything just worked out perfectly. Yep. Yeah, and that's I love because it. I really believe that it's just you know the, the like enjoy the journey. What whatever anybody's spiritual beliefs are, I agree. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that you're in this moment now. You're in. You're at this time in human history where technology is growing exponentially. Uh, so we've got to think exponentially. Meaning we've got to think. So for example, what I mean by that, Will, is that GTI you said you might ten years. What about if you get it in the next five days? What could you do in the next five days that might get that GTI? Or if your brain goes, that's just not possible, which is a belief, and we um, or we can work on that after the show. Um, but the uh, but you know, what about what could I do in the next five months to get that GCI? What could I do to manifest that? What could I do to uh, get at ten times the result that I'm looking for in a shorter period of time? And that's what you know when you look at the likes of. Uh, Peter Diamandis, Elon Musk, uh, Richard Branson, I guess, Tony Robbins, all of these guys, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, uh, Bono, (laughs) whoever you want to talk about, some of the big business leaders in the UK as well. That's how they think. They don't think linear. So most of us, most of us think linear, which is grow 10% year on year on year. And yeah, we're going good if we're growing 10%. These guys don't think like that. What they focus on is how can I achieve what I set out in 10 years time in the next year? I'm going to give you a real, I'm, I'm going to wrap up with this because I'm conscious of time. Um, sure. uh, I've got, <laughs> and I'm going to wrap up with this because I've got a real good example of this, uh, how, what you described. I genuinely believe I could close a bunch of deals. I could do more live events. I could wrap up some sponsorships for the kind of the things that I was teasing earlier that I've got planned for the second part of the year. And brand new GTR is kind of like 85 grand in the UK. Obviously, you've got to insure it and, and tax it and all this kind of stuff. I genuinely believe I could grab all that and I could have a GTR within a month of really hustling. Uh, and I would, I'd take the audience on the journey with me and all this. 
the limiting belief I've got is that I live in this kind of three bedroom flat in Roundhay. It's a really nice place, but you don't want to leave a GTR like on the road. I don't have parking space. So my limiting belief isn't getting the GTR. And I'll leave you with this and you, you can ponder on this and we'll connect again on the next time to dive into it, perhaps. I'm about to but, give you a load of shit. <laughs> but but my, my limited belief is I need this big house and I need this double garage and I need all this other stuff to enable me to have this when it's not really the case at all. So I'll leave you with that, Paul, and we'll t we'll start the next show with that. So we that's will quite, start that's, the next show with that. That's kind we of like a, a personal... That's a personal kind of thing that perhaps I need to get over. But with that, mate, before we get to the next show, tell us a little bit more where we can find out more about you, uh, kind of where we can connect with you, and uh, and yeah, so the audience who you've blown some minds can uh, can get in touch. Okay, great. Well, if you want to hear more, just uh, drop me a line at paul at paul adamson.org any questions you have anything like that copy willing no probs at all i'd be thrilled to answer them um and also you can check out my website on pauladamson.org and uh from there you'll see all the facebook links twitter etc and things like that and uh, i'd be thrilled to connect with you and help you in any way that i can amazing stuff i appreciate that as always i appreciate the insights i appreciate that we've gone <laughs> we only managed to get two two of the the five points that I wanted to get through today and we've covered about 50 more so I love these conversations I love when it's kind of non-linear I love it when we're going down all these rabbit holes and hopefully the audience find it interesting and get a lot of out of it as well so with that Paul I want to thank you for your time I want to thank you for joining us again on the Salesman Podcast oh, thank you Will and it's great to be here great opportunity looking forward to the next one bring it on bring it on <laughs>